I'm Rob Redding, America's independent voice. 855-ROB-3080 to get into the radio program. There's 855-ROB-3080 to get into the radio show. There is a new documentary that's coming out. It is by Christopher Martin. You know him, a play of Kid and Play. The movie is entitled, Can Hip Hop Go to School? That's what the movie is entitled. Everyone's talking about it. Here is what they're saying about it. And they're saying that this is one of the movies to watch. Here's a part of the trailer. Um, I guess what kind of person is this catered towards? And like, what kind of career goal after you graduate would you want to... Well, well, here's the thing, I, I, and I get this question a lot because people, and, and I get the question asked, and it's, and it's usually not on the positive side. It's usually, so what kind of what kind of job is somebody going to get with a hip hop degree? It's not a, a hip hop degree. It's it's a degree that combines studies in music mm-hmm. and studies in business. And then there's also a technology side of it that deals with the computer applications behind um, music production. So when you think about this, student comes in, achieves a, a certain level of aptitude from the performance standpoint in music, so a person can essentially do, go on to graduate school, get a master's degree in music, A person could theoretically, if they take um, enough business courses to get a minor in business administration, Mm -hmm. they could go and do an MBA program somewhere. Or if a student wants to really focus in heavily on the technological side, there's applications for engineering technology, um, engineering technology sciences, computer sciences. I mean, there's lots of... Um, room for further growth. I think that this class provides hope. I was able to basically get a glimpse into what it was in the past. I'm able to define it for my own self in the present, and I'm able to have hope for what it will be in the future. If hip hop started out on the street corner and with a simple notebook, to know that it is now at an institution, that's just so much hope. And I'm thankful for the opportunity to be one of the first to actually go through and set you know the standards. Can hip hop go to school? This is part of a new documentary that Christopher Play Martin is out there talking about. We're so excited to have him on the program. Christopher Martin, thank you for coming on. Thank you for having me. This is an honor, and uh, I want to thank you and and let you know that I really appreciate being able to have this audience before your uh, your listeners. Well, let me just say that, of course, obviously, you know, I, I'm a fan of your work. I remember uh, going to the movies when I was a kid. I'm, I'm going to tell them my age now. <laughs> and, and watching you bounce around the school uh, and about around the, 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 the black top and, and around the, uh, the way in this movie, the kid and play movie that everybody watched. Right. And this was a big fixture for a lot of people in one of the best dance movies out there. Set the standard in dance movies. Uh, so you have a reputation that precedes itself, obviously. Now you've got this documentary, and you also teach courses at FAMU. And this is all entitled, Can Hip-Hop Go to School? Why do this documentary? What What's behind it? What's your thought behind uh, putting this out there? Well, I, I feel a responsibility, and um, I actually have a responsibility. A lot of people who watch the movies, the House Party movies and Class Act, and a lot of the music videos, and a lot of the incredible, uh, on, on my angle, not speaking for kid, but for myself, undeserved fortune and fame and a lot of notoriety and popularity, I didn't do a lot of things that people would think that you were supposed to do in order to acquire that, which was to be a, you know, to finish school and to go to school. I actually got kicked out of five high schools, and I did a lot of things in the streets that I'm not proud of. And, you know, just to make a long story short, to end up uh, being able to experience a lot of stuff in the entertainment business and then start meeting 
awesome people like the sound bite you just heard was with Dr. Kawachi Clemens meeting um Mark Anthony Neal, who's the Duke, uh Tamisha uh uh Flowers Holland, who is the wife of, of Kwame, very well known rapper who was doing things at John Jay College with her hip hop for life. And there's a lot of other people that I had along to had a the blessing and the opportunity to meet on my journey. And rather than continuing to uh, perpetuate a image of that life is easy and, you know, everything I did was right, it wasn't. And I just became very humbled. And in my conversion to become a Christian, I just felt very responsible and divinely obligated to be able to share with people the dark side of my life, which, you know, I almost committed suicide and was ready to, to call it a day because things, all the glitters did not, was not gold. And as I had another rebirth as far as a career, uh, being over 10 years in the educational high learning system, I taught and worked with Miles College in Birmingham, Alabama, spent a, a long, great time uh, over five years at North Carolina Central University, and now moving on to Florida A&M University. I just, as I met children and I saw students who were wrestling and struggling with what they want to do and what they want to accomplish, come to find out the culture of hip-hop has a lot to offer in regards to inspiration, and it's more to us than just the music. It's more to us than just the hip-hop. You don't stop. A lot of us have gone on to achieve a lot of great things in the industry. So I just asked the question, can hip-hop return back as the prodigal son to the schools and offer something as a recruitment tool? And as, uh, to, as Dr. Kawachi Clements describes in the beginning of the piece that you've shown, you know, to be able to inspire people to get more involved, uh, more than just being entertainers, but also being, um, you know, technical and, and, and offer gifts and stuff in regards to the advancement in music, monies, and all the things that come along with that. That'd we're going to talk good. more about this. It makes plenty of sense. Uh, we're going to talk more about this in just a moment. We're talking about the brand new documentary, Can Hip Hop Go to School, by Christopher Play Martin of Kid in Play. Can Hip Hop Go to School? That's the question. You know, you have given us so much of your personal struggle that you have had. And this is a documentary where we're going to see that played out on the screen. What other elements are we going to see? Well, you know, basically, the only reason why I share as much as I share is to be transparent. And I find when you do that, you know, especially as a, a preacher or a teacher and stuff, I think we make the mistake of always pointing the finger, you should, you should. And I find I get so much more out of conversation and, and, re and being able to relate to others when I just put myself out there. And when you do that and you find out what another individual is going through, reasons why they don't think that they're good enough to go to school, better yet a college, or what they're going through in their home life. And when I can say, you know, and activate the ministry of Me Too, you know, you get so much more accomplished. And in this documentary, I'm able to speak with other great friends and peers in the industry, so many that I could name that I've been so fortunate to be able to get interviews. And I don't like calling it interviews. I'm having conversations with them. And when people find out what everyone has gone through, you find out nobody else is special or better than the others. There before the grace of God go I. So that's really the foundation to this piece, to see that we all have a lot in common, especially coming from the inner cities and the rural areas and stuff of wherever you come from. And that empowers people and lets them know that, man, if that can, if they can do it and have accomplished what they've accomplished with, with little means or, you know, things that I thought they have had that they didn't, you know, that's a great, um, that's very inspiring. And, that, and that's the main part and ingredient to this documentary. Now, let's talk about some of the people that are in it. I know you're in it, and who else? Well, I'm really not in it as much as you would think, you know, because I'm behind the camera. You know, this is you following me behind stage, you know, as I'm teaching and educating in certain facilities and stuff. You know, on the weekends, you know, I still tour with Kid, and it puts us in front of a lot of high-profile people. You know, everybody from icons and pioneers, from Grandmaster Cash, from the Cold Crush Brothers to Grand Wizard Theodore, all the way to a Jim Jones and a Nick Cannon and 
run from I mean D from Run DMC, uh, Trey Songs. I mean the list goes on. It's really unfair to me to start listening because I can't remember everyone. But you know I pretty much have all bases covered. But also the academic all stars like I've mentioned before, Mark Anthony Neal, uh, Dr. Kawachi Clemens, and and others that and uh, Blake and uh, was a group out of New York uh, called Flocabulary. Two great gentlemen who have put together this thing of helping students pass their SAT scores and other things in schools through hip-hop. So uh, it's, it's just an amazing piece, and I just want to raise the question not only to uh, uh, students but to uh, teachers and professors and presidents and chancellors as well, is that we're not saying, I'm not saying hip-hop is the answer, but put us in your toolbox to be a part of solving the problems that we're, we're facing. You know, that's what it's all about. Well, we've had this discussion before about classes actually being taught uh, on, uh, of course, Jay Z and, and and Tupac and and all of that. So this is not anything that's that new, right? No, uh, not at all. I, you know, I don't know much about what what others have. I just know that what we do is, you know, we we started out with a thing called hip hop in context one on one. And I had the honor of being side by side with Ninth Wonder, a very well known Grammy award winning producer. And basically, with this context, hip hop in context that we had at North Carolina Central University, is that we're just letting them know that, you know, you, you, there's more to dancing to these records. My favorite, and I feel this the greatest record of all in hip hop ever made was the message by Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five, because it was a defining moment in hip hop where we left party, party, party all the time, which was nothing wrong with that because really it was a group of people using music as escapism to get away from the issues that were happening during very economic uh, downtimes in New York in the 70s going into the 80s. So it served a purpose. But now here comes Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five and God Bless the Soul of Sylvia Robinson with Sugar Hill Records who decided to do something different. And it really touched a chord with millions of people around the world like, you know, don't push me because I'm close to the edge. I'm trying not to lose my head. The ingredient to a hit record is when you come up with a subject matter that the masses can relate to. And unfortunately, that's what everybody can relate to. So that's what... All of these stories do, from a Jay-Z to me to whatever the case may be. We didn't wake up in the morning and say, let's, have, let's make a hit record or a hit movie. House Party was based on something the millions of teens and even older people can relate to, what you do when your parents go away for the weekend. So it's about subject matter and then being able, what I want to do is be accountable and say, hey, let's use this. If you want to be in the entertainment business, let's just say you want to be a set designer. That takes carpentry. You want to deal with the budget. You want to deal with the, something called line itemizing budget items that has to deal with math and numbers when you have to read a script you have to know how to read you know if you want to be a costume designer all of these things are part of a trade so let's deal with the seed of those things first become good with those things and then you can move on to the things you think you want to do in the entertainment business and along the way i wouldn't be surprised if you change your mind and say hey i've discovered this other thing along this journey and i can do that and be that too so that's what hip-hop is being used for you know we're talking to Christopher Play Martin of Kid and Play. He's got a brand new documentary, Can Hip Hop Go to School? How can folks find out more about the documentary? Well, my home is at brandnews.com. That's B R A N D N E W Z dot com. And that's where you can see the trailer. And you uh, stick with me there. That's my home on the internet. Uh, I am on Facebook and I am on Twitter. You can follow me when you go to the homepage there. All those links are there. But I'm always giving updates. And um, I'm going to be finished. I got one more interview I want to get in the can for it. And I'm good. And, um, you know, we're looking at this being done by, you know, the next, within the next couple of months you know i want it out before the summer and before everybody returns back to school in the fall so and i would love people's you know um suggestions and advice and input and things of that nature you can find the, the um the trailer on youtube as well just put in can hip-hop go to school and it'll pop up so i'm really excited about this and it's, it's a group effort you know many so many people in the entertainment business have been very generous in regards to giving me their time as a friend and as peers and um, if you're ed academic scholars as well. So it's all good. Maybe we got to get a camera up in your face too as well, sir. 
Well, we, hey, you know, I would, I would love to uh, talk about it because, you know, I'm a former hip-hop DJ. You know, that's what I used to do. Wow. People say, how in the world did you get to talk radio? You know, but I used to do I used to do hip hop radio, and you couldn't get a record sold in the Middle Georgia area without coming through my show between Atlanta and Albany. I was all there was. Uh, so, you know, if you ever want to talk to me, I I, I think no, I might have something to say. I definitely do. I'm not just saying it because <laughs> I'm on your show, and you know, you bring up an interesting point because hip hop is, is 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 old enough now where a lot of people who were young and doing their thing where they were doing it at in the culture are now presidents of banks, presidents of universities. I mean, the list goes on. So, you know, a lot of people laughed as Biggie said, never never thought hip hop would take it this far. This far. That's, that's right. That's, that's right. That. All right. We got to leave it there. Christopher Play Martin, brandnews.com, B-R-A-N-D-N-E-W-Z.com. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. God bless. And to your listeners, Happy New Year.